guys, I'm back this week with another entertaining menu for you. And you'll be happy to know we've gone back to the old format. So thank you so much for all your comments. It was great to hear that so many of you like the long format better. Personally, truth be told, I like it better too. I also have to say that I've been having so much fun with this entertaining menu that I thought wouldn't it be fun to invite the other King Community cooks to come and join the party. So, I'm going to take a break for the next couple of weeks and you are going to be treated to some other really great menus. Next week we have Whitney who's going to be sharing her drinks and appetizer party. I've seen some of these recipes and they look amazing, so you're in for a real treat. Then we're going to have Kelly who's going to share her family friendly Italian meal, which also looks delicious. After that we're going to have Liesl who's going to share with us her favorite fall menu. But not to worry, I will be back, especially as we get towards the holidays. I have some awesome menus that I want to share with you as we get into the entertaining season. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you how to make a fabulous grilled cheese party with homemade soup. Now, I'm going to give you four grilled cheese and soup pairings. Now, I don't expect you to make them all. In fact, I think to make them all for one party would be a bit too much. But that way, you'll see four different options. You can pick your favorites and then make the ones that look best for you. First up, a kid's grilled cheese with mozzarella and cheddar served with fresh apple slices. And then we're making a smoky cheddar and bacon grilled cheese served with a spicy corn chowder. Then I'll show you how to make my roasted tomato and fennel soup, which is the perfect complement to a mozzarella and pesto grilled cheese. Then it's ham and Swiss with spicy Dijon mustard served alongside a comforting potato and leek soup. And finally, for a touch of sweet and savory, it's a grilled brie and pear sandwich served alongside a back-to-basics butternut squash soup. Grilled cheese sandwiches have been a mainstay in my life since I was a kid. My mother, who came from a very traditional Irish-American family, married my dad, who came from a fun-loving Italian-American family. And I love the pictures from their wedding because you can definitely see the two personalities at play from both sides of the family. But one thing that they did share in common is the fact that they were each one of five children. So that meant that my sister and brother and I had a ton of cousins growing up. And every time all of us kids got together, there was one thing that the parents could always count on that everybody would eat, and that was a grilled cheese sandwich. As I grew older, I still love grilled cheese sandwiches, but I got more adventuresome with the fillings. And I love to throw grilled cheese parties because the kids love them. What kid won't eat a grilled cheese sandwich? And the adults love them too because it makes them feel like a kid again. If you have kids that are a little bit older or a little more adventuresome, they may eat all the adult food, and that's great. But if your kids are like mine and a little bit picky, they like things plain Jane. So I like to just take care of them first. So my basic grilled cheese sandwiches that my girls will always eat involves cheddar cheese and mozzarella. And they like that combination because when it's cooked, they see the different colored cheeses and it kind of just makes it fun for them. Take a piece of whole wheat bread, butter both sides with melted butter, place it on a griddle, now if you don't have a griddle and you want to have a grilled cheese party, I highly recommend it. And you can get some really inexpensive ones, usually at like Target. It just helps to make a lot of sandwiches in one batch and not have one pan that you're actually making like 20 sandwiches. That would just take forever. On one side of the bread, you're going to put a piece of mozzarella cheese, and on the other side, you're going to put a piece of cheddar. Once the cheese starts to melt a little bit, you're going to turn them into a sandwich, both sides on top of each other. Grill both sides, and then when it's done, I like to cut it into equal sized triangles. My girls get a great sense of pride when they can finish their plates, so I like to make the servings very small and manageable to help them. And all you do is take a chef's knife and make a big X in the center, and that will create four equal triangles. I would then lay them all out on platter, and in the center, serve some sliced apples. That way you know the kids are taken care of, grilled cheese and apples, what kid wouldn't eat that, and they'll be good to go. Now onto the more grown-up varieties. I'm gonna start with a Tex-Mex flavor profile. We're gonna do a smoky cheddar grilled cheese with bacon paired with a spicy corn chowder. Now I love this flavor combination because you've got the savory smokiness of the bacon and then you have the creamy sweetness of the corn with a little bit of a kick. You're gonna start with some sourdough bread. You're gonna brush each side with a little bit of melted butter. To that you're gonna add cheddar cheese on each slice a little bit of crumpled bacon, already cooked, you can just chop it up, and then some smoked paprika. Now smoked paprika and regular paprika are not the same thing, so make sure you get smoked paprika. It's gonna give you a really nice smokiness. You're gonna grill both sides until golden brown. And then once they're done, 
I like to cut these into smaller portions, just because for a party like this, you kind of want everybody to taste a little bit of all the sandwiches, and if you cut them into smaller pieces, people won't feel as bad taking all of these big sandwiches that they may not finish. So the way to do that is just take a chef's knife and literally create like a V in the sandwich, and that will give you three equal triangles. Now for the soup. First, you're gonna start with sauteing some white onion in about two tablespoons of butter. You wanna make sure that that onion is very fragrant and soft. Then you're gonna add a bag of frozen corn. I really love this recipe because the frozen corn is so easy and simple. If you wanted to use fresh corn, you could, but the frozen corn is really gonna taste just as good. Then you're gonna wanna add one peeled russet potato. The potato is gonna add a nice creaminess to the soup without having to add a lot of heavy cream. Then you're gonna put about two to three cups of vegetable stock. Now you could use chicken stock, but I kind of like if I'm serving a vegetable soup to make it vegetarian, just so if you have vegetarian friends, they can eat it too. You're gonna take that soup and let it simmer just until the potatoes are fork tender. When that's done, you just wanna puree the soup in batches. And the reason you wanna do that, even if all the soup will fit into your blender, is it's gonna make it a lot creamier and finely pureed if it's not completely full when you go to puree it. Have the soup cool a little bit before you put it in the blender, but if it is sort of still warm, that's okay. Just put a dish towel on top of the blender before you hit puree. That way, if the soup splatters, you're not gonna burn yourself. Once all your soup is pureed, you wanna take it from the bowl and pour it back into the pot, and then season it with a little bit of salt and pepper and about a quarter cup of whole milk. While the soup is simmering, you're gonna bake your tortillas. Now I like to have a mix of white corn tortillas and blue tortillas, just because I think they look pretty. They taste basically the same, but it's really more for the presentation. Take a stack of three of each, and then cut them in half, and then cut them into two inch strips. You're gonna take those tortillas and put them out on a rimmed baking sheet, just in a single layer, and bake at 350 for about 15 minutes, just until they're lightly crispy and golden brown. So to serve this soup, place in your favorite soup bowl, top with a little bit of hot sauce, some freshly chopped cilantro, and your baked tortilla strips. You'll see that this soup is very, very pretty. It's delicious, it's got a great kick to it, a nice crunch with the tortillas, and it's the perfect complement to the smoky grilled cheeses. For our next combo, we're gonna head to Italy for a mozzarella and pesto grilled cheese with a tomato and fennel soup. This is a great idea for any vegetarians that may be coming to your party because it's all vegetable based. The first step with these sandwiches is to make your pesto sauce. Now you certainly could use pesto from a store. That would be perfectly fine, but because pesto is so easy to make homemade and it tastes, in my opinion, so much better homemade, I like to take the effort to make it myself. And here's how you do it. Take some fresh basil leaves, Add some garlic, pine nuts, salt and pepper. Pulse that up just until it's all chopped and incorporated. Then you're slowly going to add your olive oil while the machine's running. And you'll see, you'll start to get kind of a paste will form. That's what you want. And depending on how oily you like your pesto, you just want to kind of keep adding more oil. I think about a half a cup is a good amount. Once it's done, you're gonna remove it from the food processor and stir in your Parmesan cheese. And that's it, homemade pesto in minutes. How easy was that? To assemble the sandwiches, you're gonna take some olive bread, lightly brush melted butter on each side. On the other side, you're gonna add your homemade pesto. To that, add some mozzarella cheese, one piece to each slice of bread, some sliced sun-dried tomatoes, and then grill it about two to three minutes on each side, just until the cheese is melted. Once it's done, again, cut it into triangles, and you're good to go. This time of year, tomatoes are sort of on their last leg, so they kind of need a little extra boost in the form of something sweet like fennel. Slice probably about eight Roma tomatoes in half. Put them on a sheet pan, and to that, add two bulbs of fennel, just sliced into wedges. You're also gonna add some peeled garlic. 
toss the whole thing with olive oil, salt and pepper, and herbs de Provence. Pop them in the oven at very high heat, about 450 degrees, for about 20 to 25 minutes. While your vegetables are in the oven, take out a large soup pot. Melt about two tablespoons of butter and add some white onion, some carrots, and some celery. Saute the vegetables until they start to get really fragrant and soft. Then, once your vegetables are done from the oven, you wanna take the whole sheet pan and pour it all into the stock pot, juices and all. To that, you're gonna add some tomato paste, some vegetable stock, one fresh bay leaf, if you can't find fresh, dried will work just as well, and a few sprigs of thyme. You're gonna let that simmer just for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once the soup is done, you wanna fish out the bay leaf and the thyme, and then puree the soup in batches. Return it back to the stock pot, add a little bit of salt and pepper, and just simmer it just until thickened. Now at this point, if your soup is too thick, you could add some more vegetable stock just to thin it out. To serve, just ladle out some soup into a soup bowl, drizzle with a little bit of olive oil, and some freshly chopped thyme. It's a great flavor combination with the olive bread and the mozzarella and the fresh pesto, really wonderful Italian flavors. For our next grilled cheese pairing, we're gonna head to France for a sandwich that my husband loves. It's a grilled ham and cheese with Dijon mustard, served with a comforting potato and leek soup. To assemble this sandwich, you're gonna start with some French bread. Now, not a baguette, you actually wanna look for a French loaf and have your grocery store slice it for you into sandwich slices. Many of the grocery stores today do that and it's such a great service, I love it. Take that bread and brush it on either side with some melted butter. Then you're gonna add Dijon mustard. If you can find the Dijon mustard that's whole grain, I think it's a really great texture to add to something like this, but if you can't find that, regular Dijon mustard will work well too. Add two slices of Swiss cheese, and then some ham. Grill on either side, just until golden brown, and then pop off the griddle and cut into triangles, and that's it. You're gonna start the soup by melting some butter in a stock pot. To that, you're gonna add a white onion, some celery, some freshly chopped leeks, but just the white parts, not the green parts, and garlic. Saute those up just until they're fragrant and tender. To that, you're gonna add some russet potatoes, just peeled and chopped, and then just pour about two to three cups of vegetable stock, just until all the vegetables are covered. You wanna let that simmer for at least 10 to 15 minutes, just until the potatoes are really soft. Once your soup is done, you wanna puree it in batches just until it's nice and smooth. Pour it back into the pot and season with salt and pepper, and that's it. To serve, you wanna ladle it into some soup bowls and then garnish with some freshly chopped chives. This soup is a great complement to the sandwich because the sandwich has a lot of bold flavors in it. You've got the strong Swiss cheese and the spiciness of the mustard, and the soup has just a nice comforting sort of mellow flavor that it really works as a great backdrop. Now for something sweet and savory. My pear and brie grilled cheese served with a butternut squash soup. I love this combination because it reminds me of my friend Lori who would always serve warm brie and pears as an appetizer. And in fact, I even love that at her wedding they even served pear and brie quesadillas. It was a big hit. So I thought this might be fun for a grilled cheese sandwich. To make this grilled cheese sandwich, you're gonna start with some walnut raisin bread. Butter it lightly on either side. Add one slice of brie. Now you don't wanna overdo it with the brie because it's pretty rich, so just one thin slice will do the trick. Add some sliced pears and just grill on either side until golden brown and the brie starts to melt. Cut it into triangles and that's it. Now for the soup. I call this my back to basic butternut squash soup. Reason being is I feel like in the last couple years, people have done some really weird things to butternut squash soup. Adding fruit, adding curry, adding all kinds of spices. And really it's such a great vegetable. It doesn't need much. I think less is more in this situation. So all I do is saute up some onion and some celery in a soup pot. To that, you're gonna add some fresh butternut squash. 
Then you're gonna add some vegetable stock, just enough to cover all the vegetables, and then simmer for about 15 minutes, just until everything's fork tender. Puree the soup in batches, just until really smooth and velvety, and then place it back in your soup pot and add a little bit of salt and pepper. Ladle the soup out into some soup bowls, and then I like to garnish this soup with just some chopped pecans. I feel like it's nice to have a little bit of crunch. And that's it. This soup is a great complement to the pear and brie sandwiches. It's a unique flavor combination that I think is unexpected, that your guests will love. It's definitely one that I would consider adding to the party. Anytime that I'm entertaining and I have a bunch of kids and a bunch of grown-ups, I always want to do a dessert that's going to please everybody. And certainly for something like this, chocolate chip cookies would be a great idea, but I wanted to do something that was a little bit more sophisticated, just a little fancier to kick it up a notch. So a few weeks ago, I tested this recipe where I took my favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe and put it into a tart pan, added some chopped hazelnuts, baked it, and as soon as I tasted it, my first reaction was, oh my gosh, that is ridiculous, that is so good. It almost tastes like Nutella because you've got the chocolate and the hazelnut and the combination together just makes for such a great dessert. So here's how you make it. The first thing you wanna do is toast your hazelnuts. Pour them out on a rimmed baking sheet just until they're creating a single layer. Pop them in the oven for probably five to seven minutes just until their skins start to break apart and you'll smell them. Once they're done, take them out of the oven and pour them onto a dish towel. If you have a terry cloth dish towel, that actually works the best. What you're trying to do is steam the skins off them. So once you pour it out of the dish towel, you're gonna fold the dish towel up and let it steam for about 10 minutes. Then you're gonna go in and kind of rub the dish towel against the nuts and you'll see all of the skins will start to come off. You probably will not be able to remove all the skins, so if they have a little bit left over, that's okay. Once they're done, you want to roughly chop them and just set aside until you're ready to use them. In a small bowl, add some flour, baking powder, and salt. Whisk that all together just until incorporated. Then in a standing mixer, you're going to whip together some softened butter with white sugar and brown sugar, just until light and fluffy. Scrape down the bowl, add an egg, and some vanilla. Once that's all mixed together, you're gonna slowly add your flour mixture. Beat it on low just until all incorporated. Remove it from the mixer, and then you're gonna add the hazelnuts. Stir that all together, and then add the chocolate chips. With this pie, you don't really want too many chocolate chips, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> when I tried it, I put in a whole bag of chocolate chips. When I baked the tart, it turned into like a big glob of chocolate. The chocolate was not well distributed. It didn't really bake properly the way a cookie would. So I really say anywhere between a quarter cup to a half a cup of chocolate chips is really all you need. Turn out the dough into a rimmed tart pan, about nine inches. Spread it all out so it's evenly distributed. And then you're gonna bake at 350 for about a half an hour. Once it's done, you will see that you've got the most beautiful chocolate chip looking cookie, but in a tart pan. When you serve it, you're gonna dust it with a little bit of powdered sugar and serve with a dollop of vanilla ice cream. And watch your guests go nuts. Kids will love it and adults will love it too. This thing is so good, it's so delicious, and people will be talking about it for weeks. If you wanna throw a grilled cheese and soup party, here's the game plan. First, I'd recommend picking two soups and maybe two to three sandwiches. That way, it's a lot more manageable. If you do anything more than that, it's gonna become a lot of work and kinda of get out of hand. The trick is to keep it simple. I'd also pick soups that are the most different from each other, say a potato and leek and a tomato, or the spicy corn and the sweet butternut squash. That way, you'll have a nice variety and a little something for everybody. I'd do the same thing with the sandwiches. Maybe pick one meat option and one vegetarian, just so there's a good choice. This menu is really easy to serve because you can set it all up as a buffet. Place your soup pots on trivets and then place the sandwiches on platters and let guests serve themselves. It makes it more fun and interactive. I'd also place the soup spoons out decoratively. Just place one up and one down. It's a small silly detail, but it just makes the buffet look so much nicer and reminds me of something my grandmother would have done for one of her bridge luncheons. It's totally old school, but that's why I like it. The day before the party, make the chocolate chip pie. Just keep it well covered in foil at room temperature and it'll still be ridiculously good the next day. Make all your soups, pour them into quart containers and refrigerate. 
If you're making the mozzarella pesto sandwiches, make the homemade pesto and keep it covered and refrigerated. The day of the party, if you're making the bacon grilled cheese sandwiches, you can cook all your bacon, chop it up, and place it in an airtight container. Then just leave it out at room temperature. If you're making the corn soup, you can toast your tortillas and keep them wrapped in foil at room temperature. A half hour before your guests arrive, take out all your ingredients for the sandwiches and begin to grill them. Transfer them to a sheet pan and cover loosely with foil. Place in a 200 degree oven just to keep them warm. Pour your soup back into the pots and set at a low flame to heat them up. If your soup at this point is too thick, just add a little more vegetable stock to it. That will thin it out. Set up your buffet and when your guests arrive, they'll be so impressed they'll want to dig right in. So that's how you throw a grilled cheese and soup party. I hope you guys will give this one a try. It's a great way to entertain in a casual style and I think your friends are really gonna love it. It's something new, it's something different and it makes everybody feel like a kid again.